flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. along with uh, Superintendent Rick Boggs, Assistant Superintendent Blaine Conley, and Recording Secretary Jessica McFarland. Uh, we'll get started here. Uh, upcoming board meetings, January 15, 2018. Regular meeting at the Burkett Education Center at 7 p.m. Next one would be February 12, 2018. Regular meeting, Tippecanoe Valley Middle School, 7 p.m. And next one would be March 12, 2018. Regular meeting, Tippecanoe Valley High School at 7 p.m. On with Spotlight on the Valley. And I don't think we have any new employees to welcome tonight and nothing, uh, nothing in else. addition to that. All right. All right. Uh, we'll go on to uh, see items from the visitors. Do we have anything? Not too many visitors, so items from the visitors so we'll move right on to D approve approval of consent agenda number one approved minutes of November 9th 2017 executive session number two approve the minutes of November 13th 2017 regular meeting number three approve the hiring of the following personnel Kayla Swihart Instructional Assistant at the High School, Joan Reading, Health Aid, Mentone Elementary, Hannah Eastwood, Custodian at the High School, Sarah Davis, Instructional Assistant, Mentone Elementary, Andrew Lucy, Physical Education Health Teacher for the Middle School, and Teresa Fox, cafeteria staff at the middle school. <coughs> Number four, approve the following extracurricular assignments. Kyle Ritchie, seventh grade boys basketball coach for the middle school. And Michelle DeBates, academic, academic team coach for the middle school. Number five, accept the resignation of the following personnel. Stacy Lind, Lind, Lind. <coughs> girls tennis coach for the high school, Angela Kirby, custodian, Mentone Elementary, Heather Cottle, cafeteria staff for the Mentone Elementary, and Kendra Kynes, instructional assistant for the high school. Number six, accept the retirement of the following personnel. Peggy Walters, Treasure, Akron Elementary. Number seven, approve classified and administrative salaries. And number eight, approve additional revision to 403B RAP Plan Roth Amendment. Do we have any questions there, fellas, that we need to talk about? We'll hold out. <coughs> motion we approve the Senate agenda this time, right? Brian makes motion to accept. Do I have a second? I'll second. Aaron seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. On to approval of claims and payroll. Okay, thank you, Tom. Tonight we have one pre written claim listing. Uh, it's dated November 30, 2017, at the amount of $905,204.63. Uh, our regular claim listing is dated December 11 of 2017 in the amount of $261,255.88. Then we have two payrolls this evening. The first is dated November 10, 2017 in the amount of $424,552.02. The second is dated November 24, 2017 in the amount of 417, or excuse me, 407,378 dollars and 26 cents. I submit these claims and payroll for your approval. 
Is there anything there, fellas, that you'd like to pull out and discuss, or? I'll make a motion, Todd, to accept. Thank you, they will. Stan makes a motion to accept. Do I have a second? I'll second that, Todd. Adam seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 Something you might want to share with the news that what was in there on the uh, last payment. Oh, the, yeah, as part of our uh, claims uh, this month, we made the final payment on the uh, Mentone Elementary School bond. So this uh, facility is completely paid off. Awesome. Okay. Good on the financial report. Okay. <coughs> you have before you the reconciled bank statement and the monthly financial report of funds for the month of November 2017. Uh, in summary, our receipts and our disbursements for November 2017 are uh, total receipts for all funds, $1,555,663.22. The total disbursements for all funds, $2,019,249.74. Okay. On to old business. Update on the Akron Elementary School project. And uh, Derek Anderson's here tonight to give us an update on what's going on in Akron. Good evening. Um, well, it's been a pretty productive last month. Uh, we moved in uh, the north side of the unit 87 wing, I'll call it. That's what you guys, 87 wing. Uh, we renovated those four classrooms, uh, started work on the reconfiguring those existing restrooms so that they used to be, there was four smaller ones, now they're going to be two bigger ones. Uh, we started the wall tile in there. <coughs> Uh, we also started moving out, or Christian group on the west end moved out. So there's four classrooms on that side in the media center that we're working on, along with the, the work room right in the middle. So we are uh, got the demo done in there. I'm working on, right now, piping the overhead, get the overhead rough ends in, electrical, mechanical, sprinkler fitter. And once he's done, we'll start uh, putting in the ceilings back in. And those four or five areas should be turned over by on Christmas break. So when they come back from break on the 4th, uh, they'll be using those classrooms. Uh, in the Unit B, I'll call the locker rooms and the gym area. Uh, they started <coughs> putting down the gym floor. The sub floor, they got the, all the plywood down. But then, you know, you ask them, how long is it going to take you guys? They say, oh, about two, two three weeks. And then they end up finishing it in a week. So we kind of pushed them back a little bit before they put the actual floor down because we still were working in those locker room areas. So they started the ceilings in there, the paint's done, the wall tiles in. So December 18th, they'll be back to start putting down the actual subfloor or the main playing surface. So it's that parquet, like the Celtics floor. It's pretty neat. Um, they got a couple weeks to do that. And we'll get it painted, the stripes, and then they'll start with the bleachers. So that part, going to probably linger in to right after Christmas break, mid-January. We should be done with the bleachers and everything in there. I know there's some, Brett, can you show some pictures? <coughs> there's the gym as it is right now. Uh, all the overheads in, everything's painted, backboards are in. So you can see the subfloor in. The actual wood floor is crated up with back there. And they come out in 18-inch uh, by 18-inch squares and then 9 nine by 9 squares. So the pattern is a 45-inch square of parquet. It's going to look, it's going to look real sharp. Um, we got some nice wood trim over the stage area with the scoreboard there. And then those other yellow panels you see, even with that stage, those are sound panels. And if you look up in between, on the ceiling, between each bar joist, that's continuous sound panels up there. So you have plenty of acoustic uh, installation in there to help with the sound so it doesn't echo. <coughs> it, should, it should sound really nice in there. Uh, right there is the display case. Those are some of the old artifacts from the existing building that was removed, the, the date. And then you can look to the left a little bit. That's the Akron sign. Uh, so that'll be a neat feature once that area gets turned over. And this uh, lumber around here, that's all pike hardwood, right? Right? There yes. Around I donated all that as well. Is the wood um, up here by the scoreboard? That's pike that's as well. That's pike as well? Yep. Yeah. Up there? Yep. And then at your entry to the south there where the bus pickup and drop-off is, there's a vestibule there. <coughs> there will be another similar 
um, display of you know, that, that finished wood that's close by the main entry of the office area. That pipe also is all needed. Then there's some benches. Yeah, down a little bit below, right in there, that's the entry on that south end that leads you to the athletic <coughs> wing and the locker rooms. And I think that's where the bus eventually drop off and pick off will be. In those, if you go out them doors, there's another set, but there's a big gathering area. That's where that new wood will be and benches will be in there as well. Um, over Christmas break, well, that right there, that's the bathroom. That's the locker rooms right off to the gym. So that's the wall tile on in those spaces. <coughs> Um, they started ceilings in there today, so lights and flooring will be in here by the end of the week. I'm sorry, did you want to say something more about that one there? Um, well, I was just, gonna, right up, just to the right of that picture, that's the entry to the cafeteria. Right now we have some temporary partitions to section us off. Um, as soon as break starts, those walls will come down, and then the company will be installed, the floor in the cafeteria, and down through that entryway. She's actually semi-retired and she's flying back <coughs> over Christmas break just to do that for you guys. So that's pretty nice. <laughs> Interior finishes, her name's Cheryl. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She did a lot of that, the intricate parts in the, what she's put in so far in the cafeteria and some of the other rooms. And she's going to come back over Christmas break to finish it off. Um, yep, those are the restrooms. That's the, those are the new... Uh, restrooms in the 87 wing that were completely <coughs> We have a lot of ceramic wall tile in there. And then again, the floors would be that sheet good as I call it, LBL, laminated floor. Um, those are the last, that's one of the classrooms we're working in now. Um, again, they're working on the demos done, they're working on the overheads. It's a pretty quick turnaround once you start getting into these four. So just a classroom themselves. And that's the big work. <coughs> yeah, that's the bottom picture there is the workroom right in the center. That was one of the last areas we had to finish as well. Um, playground equipment, that's all installed. Um, it's kind of hoping for a little bit of warmer weather to put the get some plastic curb around the uh, playground area, then you get some rubber mulch in there. And the way the rubber mulch is shipped, it's compressed, and it comes in big bags. So there's 40 pallets of that. And there's a little bit of moisture in it, so we kind of have to wait until it's a little above freezing, so when they ship it, it doesn't freeze and it's all bound together. So we're kind of keeping an eye on the weather. It looks promising in the next couple of weeks. It's <coughs> cold as now. Hopefully he's going to give us a little bit of a window to try to get that in. One of the other issues with that curbing is plastic. It's a hard plastic, so you, know, you got to stake it down real good. So they don't want to hit it when it's brittle and kind of break some of the clips. So we're being careful on that, watching the weather. Usually, if it's too cold, they're not outside anyways. So hopefully, you get a warm few days and put that in. If not, it'll probably be sometime early March. When the, it's not real warm, but it's warm enough. Overall, I think uh, we might be a little behind on some things towards the end here, mainly the gym area. that kind of got caught us up and we had to phase that, leave that section out. But, you know, we're supposed to be done by the end of the year. I think we're going to be real, real close to having all that done. Um, a lot of over Christmas break, too. A lot of it, just so there's no kids, no staff. So there's some of the areas that we did finish, there are a few things that need to be addressed in those rooms. It makes a lot more sense to do it instead of disturbing classes or working nights. It's not major, so they'll come in over break and tidy up any touch-ups or new sense that we have. I think they're going to replace all the yellow carpet over break too. Correct. Right there. Yep. There's some areas of yellow carpet being in the entryway and scattered some down those new classroom wings that yes will be replaced. It's not yellow anymore. It is right now, but it won't be when they come back from break. <coughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. it. Looks nice. Yeah, no, you guys will be real happy once we're out of here. Gone. Oh, I don't think we'll be so much happier. Maybe some people are back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is a. This was a big project, and there was a lot of uh, concessions. I'll say that a lot of people had to make. I, I can. This was 
great to work with everybody out here. Just dealing with Christy and Mr. Boggs and with all the staff. We're running into some projects where it's difficult. And this is by far one of the better ones. Good. Glad to hear that. Good deal. Thank you much. Thanks, Derek. All right. You guys have a nice holiday. Yes. yes. See you soon. All right. We'll see you from home. Okay, on to approval of approve addition to school board policy online fundraising. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, last month I brought to you uh, an addition to our school board policy. Uh, this is a policy on online fundraising, or it's called crowdfunding. <clears throat> we went through that last month and uh, talked to you a little bit about what it is and why it's necessary. And so I bring that back to you this month for your approval. Those got any questions on that? <clears throat> I have a motion to accept the policy for online fundraising. <clears throat> I'll make that motion to approve. Brian makes that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Aaron seconds. All in favor by saying aye. 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 The ayes happen. On to approval of the 2018-19 school calendar. Okay. Again, last <laughs> month I brought to you the um, school calendar for 2018-2019. We went through that a little bit. Uh, on your board report there you have a summary of uh, basically some of the basics in that calendar. Uh, you also have a copy of, of the calendar itself. Uh, I'll do that. I'd bring that back to you this month and ask you to approve it. So that's where we are. Okay, so any questions about that? Elder, that you had last month. Uh, can we add 20 days? Can we add 20 days to it? Mm. <coughs> We're not getting that. <laughs> this is pretty similar to last year. It uh, is almost identical to last year's calendar. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'll let you negotiate that. You're right. a senior, aren't, aren't you? Right? You don't yeah. care. You're like, all right. <laughs> Fine, 20 days. I'll go back and tell them. <laughs> I have a motion to accept the school calendar as presented. I'll make that motion, Tom. Adam makes that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Saying seconds it. All in favor by saying aye. Aye. The aye. Yeah, ayes have it. Any other? No. That's it for <coughs> business. Real good. On to new business. Presentation on Indiana State Board of Education Graduation Pathways Panels Recommendations. Yeah, and uh, a little background here before we turn it over to Mr. Strife and, and uh, Mrs. Anglin. But the uh, Indiana State Board of Education created a graduation pathway panel to establish graduation pathway recommendations for the State Board of Ed. Uh, the recommendations were to create an educated and talented workforce able not just to meet the needs of business and higher education, but also able to succeed in all post-secondary endeavors. Uh, the recommendations seek to ensure that every Hoosier student graduates from high school number one with a broad awareness and engagement with individual career interests and associated career options. Number two, a strong foundation of academic and technical skills. And number three, uh, demonstrate employability skills that lead directly to meaningful opportunities for post-secondary education, training, <coughs> and <coughs> gainful employment. Um, at the time that I asked uh, Mr. Kripe and Mrs. Engel to cut make this uh, presentation, the State Board had not voted on those uh, recommendations they have at this point. So I think what they will share with you tonight uh, looks like it's going to be the gospel. So, folks, thank you, Claudia. I'm going to pass out to that win. We've got a little handout for you, and Mr. Bob, we've got the PowerPoint. You sent that to me or you have it? You got it, okay. Uh, should be the only thing on it. You know, it's, uh, it's, first of all, it's exciting to be here tonight. Thank you very much. And I want to thank Cheyenne and Dylan for being here. And uh, 
Dylan, that's your responsibility when you hear like 20 extra days. You need to be on top. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your spot. Your spot. So that's okay. That's okay. So, um, you know, I, I, the first thing that everybody needs to know is this is a big deal. This is a this is a game changer. This is a big deal. This is serious. I really want to thank uh, Mr. Boggs and Mr. Connolly for their leadership and for allowing us to. Uh, go down to the State Principals Conference. We also, uh, Mr. Boggs, Ms. England, and I attended at Homestead, uh, I guess you would say a work session, maybe would be the best uh, to describe kind of leading up to this. Uh, but it, it is a very big deal, and it's something that uh, I feel like we are out in front of. We have good control, but at the same time, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions from the state that they don't know yet. Um, I know it's probably hard to imagine that they passed something and not know exactly how it was going to work, but uh, they've done it. Uh, it's not all bad. There are some really good things, and we'll show you those tonight. But uh, I will do our best to answer your questions, but I can't tell you, there might be some times when I'm, we say but they don't know, and, and, and we'll talk about that. So, okay. Um, the first thing on this first slide here tells you, well, where is all this coming from? And what you have here is Indiana Bill 1003, and this bill did all kinds of things that really changed. And this is definitely coming uh, straight from the legislature. But what you can see in red there is, uh, the legislature put on the State Board of Education this idea that you need to come up with a graduation pathway rather than just pass an end-of-course assessment exam, which would be part of the graduation formula right now in algebra and language arts. So it comes from Bill 1003. This did all kinds of things. This is also the same bill that we've talked to you in the past about uh, how that is going to eliminate the general diploma uh, at the federal accountability, and I do think you'll see that come to the state level, um, but this is kind of the bill that set it all up for us. Um, probably one of the most interesting facts that you know, I learned down at the state conference was right now currently in Indiana, 86% of students attend Indiana public schools. 14% then are of others, mainly parochial, private, and some homeschool. The original panel was a panel of higher ed commission that they pretty much, that they said, okay, you guys are going to create the pathways, only had one educator out of nine. So they went back to the, to the legislature and the legislature said, okay, we're going to give you five more positions for this commission. And the idea was that three of those positions were to be for educators. Uh, as it ended up, they only added one more. So what you get then is a commission that's made up of only two people, which is exactly 14%, which reverses the formula of what it should be for public educators. Uh, so one of the biggest problems you're going to see is this, this panel that was created is not people that deal directly with public education or kids on a daily basis. And I think you're going to see some of the issues that, that come up from that. So. That was one of the big points down at the state conference they wanted us to know is not really equal representation for public schools on this panel. Um, this was just a slide to show you what are the requirements right now to graduate. And um, currently, we have your general diploma, you have your core 40 diploma, and then you have your academic honors diploma or your technical honors diploma. So this was just included here for you to kind of see what we're looking at. Um, Certainly with ESSA that has just been passed, that's your federal accountability, they have gotten rid of the general diploma. When accountability comes around this time, or this time next year, we'll actually have two letter grades. We'll have a federal letter grade uh, and a state letter grade. The biggest difference for the high school um, is that there is no core, or there is no general diploma counting towards your graduation rate on the federal. So this is something I do think that's gonna come to Indiana all the way through. Uh, again, this is one of those things that the state said, well, we're not sure for pathways, but with Bill 1003 kind of driving the train, which is what everything's referring to, it's going to get rid of the general diploma as far as graduation requirements and make every student at least achieve uh, the core four. Okay, so this is the paper that you have in front of you, at least one side of the paper, and this is really the nuts and bolts of, of what they've decided. I think the scariest thing to look at is a student has to get all three of these components. And so gone are the days where you say, okay, um, here are the requirements to graduate, you've got the credit hours, you've met it, you're going to graduate. They've really created a scenario, as crazy as this sounds, is that you could earn a diploma from Tippecanoe Valley High School, but not graduate. That, that, that's a very... For sure. Let me say that again. I know that's crazy. I see your eyes going up, Mr. Murphy. That's right. You could, you could earn a diploma, 
but not graduate because you didn't meet these requirements. Um, so we'll kind of look at each one of these boxes as we go. Okay, so to get a high school diploma, we don't really have any, any issues there except for what actually counts. Are you going to count a general diploma or is it going to be core 40 minimum? I do believe strongly that we're going to get to core 40. It's not quite there yet. Those days are around the corner. So uh, that's why I had that other slide. But not to, that, that's, that's standard operating procedure and what we're used to. When you go to box number two, okay, it says there that the student must have at least one of the following. And what you have there are a project-based learning experience, a service-based learning experience, or a work-based learning experience. I feel very confident that most of our students will receive all three, but all of our students will at least have one. Uh, we've talked to the English department about possibly looking at senior, uh, senior English, having some type of exit project to, just to make sure that we get that. But we're, we're covered here. Um, there's a lot of goofiness with what the state, how the state is defining service-based learning. They're even saying that if you're on an extracurricular team, uh, if you're part of an extracurricular organization, that would count as long as it equals 20 hours. The issue really isn't, will our students meet these? The biggest issue for number two is, who's going to be responsible for keeping track? That's the huge issue. And then, at what does that cost? Uh, when you're looking at mobility of students with coming in, you know, what have they done? Just keeping track of that is a huge nightmare that I don't think they've quite fully figured out. And they're pretty much throwing on the schools and saying, well, you guys will figure this out. Um, so when you look at number one, we feel well, we're good. When you look at number two, we feel like our students will meet that. Just the whole idea of, of tracking it is, a, is a big issue. Where there's probably the most uh, discussion and certainly debate, debate is on number three. Okay, so let's say we, we get the diploma and we figure out how to get them to the core 40. Uh, you know, we find them that they've done one of those the project based, service based, or work based. When you get to number three, this is where we feel the biggest issues are. And what you see there is it says a student must complete one of those bullet points. For the moment, I want you to just not even act like that bottom bullet point is there, and I'll explain what that is in a little bit where it says locally created. So just, just kind of, let, let's just assume that's not there, because in reality, that's going to be very hard to achieve, but I'll explain what that is in a minute. What you see here is the state didn't really understand that most of these bullet points are the same students. For example, bullet point one, two, and three, those are the same kids. You know, your honors diploma kids, are the same kids that are going to reach the benchmarks on the ACT and the same kids are going to reach the benchmarks on the SAT. Uh, currently, right now, too, it's important that you know that the benchmarks are 30 points above what both IU and Purdue are accepting. So, I mean, that's just, I don't, I'm not sure how they got those numbers, but that's what they're using. So, they're only going to be the very, very top students. They're your academic honor students, okay, so, or your honors diploma students. If you look down then too, I want you to go to the second last bullet point there, where it says AP, IB stands for International Baccalaureate, dual credit, uh, Cambridge International Courses or CLEP, and to be honest with you, I didn't even know what that was, nor did pretty much any other principal down there, so we all went to that booth. We took about a minute there, and you realize that there's no way they're going to do that, so we, let, you know, we left that booth. Um, but what you're looking at is the AP, IB, dual credit, that once again, those are the same kids that are up there with your honors diploma and can reach your benchmarks. So it really leaves our students with two possible outs to graduate. And the, the one is the ASVAB test, which if you don't know, the ASVAB is your minimum entrance uh, exam uh, to the military. Now the state has said that they will accept the lowest score of any branch of the military. Right now that is a score of a 31 to join the Army. All right, so we call around a lot of local recruiters and said, well, how hard is the ASVAB test to, to pass? And we received all different types of answers, and I finally got a recruiter I felt was really shooting me straight. It's a four-part test, two English, two math, and he said it was pretty much equivalent to Algebra 2. Well, if it's Algebra 2 passing, that's the same group of kids to get to the core 40 that are going to struggle. Now, that's, that's going to be certainly, we will have a lot of students sign up for that ASVAB. The nice thing is it's free. It's online, you know right away, and you can take it as many times as you want. So that's certainly an out. The hard thing with that, though, is waiting to see if a kid passes. When do you first give it? You know, just and if they don't, then what's your next out? The most likely 
in scenario we have is to look at the bullet point there that says career and technical education. That's the CTE. And right now at, at Tiffany Valley, we are extremely blessed to have eight teachers that have CTE certificates to help our students. We also have um, our cooperation with the Warsaw Area Career Center is huge. This opens up a lot of avenues and a lot of pathways for our students to look at. In fact, you could just stay at Valley and we have eight that you can fulfill without even having to go to Warsaw. Warsaw the Career Center obviously opens up a lot more, um, but we can even get it done in house. But the key word there I want you to focus in on is concentrator. Now that 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 was up for a lot of debate. At one time, that word was completer. Thank goodness they changed it. All right, here's the difference. A completer would mean that you have to get all the way through the pathway. So let's say you were in agribusiness and there was 12 credit hours. You have to get all 12. All right. Concentrator means that number of credit hours in any one pathway becomes six. And I'll explain to you some of the pathways in here in a minute. You have to have six. Of those six, four have to be what they call above foundational level. So let's uh, just say you wanted to be welding, four of them have to deal with welding, right, where you could have two that are kind of foundational. Um, that helps. The, the, the fact that they changed that wording to concentrator is huge, and that's something we don't ever want to see go to completer because that does give us an out. That, that's something that we feel like we can get kids and, and get our students to meet that goal that are, you know, maybe not so, not going to earn the honors diploma or not going to reach the benchmarks. Um, the last thing I, I want to show you before we turn is the locally created pathway. The idea behind that is if there was an area that had a very specific industry that was not already a pathway, then the state board would listen. Uh, in the very beginning, a lot of the principals thought, well, maybe this is a special education pathway. You know, or maybe it was to identify a certain group of students. It's not. Uh, the example they gave was like, uh, for example, if you were in the Elkhart area and you were, your workforce was mainly looking to go to the RV industry, we'll create a pathway that was very specific for the RV industry. Uh, they also talked about in southern Indiana, uh, you know, where maybe there's a lot of boats, boating industry, you know, a very specific type. Um, so the obvious thing for us was, well, let's look at orthopedic. Well, there is an orthopedic pathway already. So. When they explained it at the principal's conference, they said, this is just not, don't expect this. They said, it's, you know, you're going to have to be very specific and, and, and really, uh, really try to tie it in and show. Now, they did just recently give a little room and say, when they're talking about locally credit pathways, they want to also see some collaboration between districts. Because uh, there was a lot of rural schools that were really looking at, this is maybe a way that we can get. But I think the state is going to hold really firm on these. It's not going to be easy to obtain. doesn't mean we're not going to try. Uh, we'll certainly, you know, group with anybody that wants to help us that we can find. But at this time, this isn't something that we want to, you know, go ahead and put all our eggs in this basket. Especially when we have the CTE teachers and that, that pathway, and then we'll really investigate the ASVAB and get a lot of these kids through. <coughs> Um, any questions so far? Yeah. Just so a box. You, Go ahead. You have, uh, like with the locally created, mm -hmm. can can a specific teacher can they design a class that can latch on to an existing pathway? Um, I, well, this again, this is one of the unknowns. This is probably one of the biggest unknowns. I think what they're going to want is to show how it's yeah. not how how this new pathway is different from what they have. So could you create one class to show? Probably not. You'd have to show. Or, I mean, if you had a couple teachers that wanted to do I two think classes you, I, of these, could that? I, yeah. I mean, it, it was yes. I think too, if you could show how another like rural small district has is in the same boat, and you could share. I think that's going to improve your chances. Um, again, this is probably one of the biggest unknowns, which is why. I was really saying, you know, let's just, we're not even going to act like this is there. We're, we're going to work towards it, and we're going to find, and this is something where I think the state, too, is going to be very firm because they're, they've are they held firm on getting here, so they don't want to give people an out, you know, because the first person that gets a locally created pathway, then everybody's going to follow that formula. Again, we're going to try. We're going to take a look at, is there something we can do or create a class? 
uh, you know, what's the catch-all? That was the one question down at the state is, you know, where, where do you put kids? Where's the catch-all pathway, you know, for, for kids that don't, don't meet this? Where's, where's your labor force pathway? Can you create just the workforce pathway? And the answer was absolutely no. You're going to have to really, we would have to really show how this pathway is for our area. That, that's what they're looking at. Um, so if you apply this formula to our, our last year's graduating class, if you remember, last year's graduating class was 95.3% graduation rate. So if you apply that formula, and this is a little unfair because last year we didn't know what the rules were because the rules changed. But we go from a 95% graduation rate to a 52% graduation rate. And we're not the only ones. And, and, and in fact, we're not, we're probably middle of the pack. You know, there's some schools that weren't affected as most, but there were schools that were affected a lot less. Obviously, one of the number one things to go to your school accountability and your school letter grade is your graduation rate. So not only are they attacking the diploma, the diploma, right, by making you get to that core 40 instead of a general, now they're saying, okay, here's more hoops to jump over so that you can graduate. So when I say this is a big deal, that's a big deal. Um, Mrs. England and I were talking, so, you know, what would be the number if we knew the rules and could play the game? What do we think we could get it to? Maybe 70, 75 percent. And, and that's probably the biggest issue, as you'll see in the upcoming slide, is where, wh where's the pathway for the other 25 percent it gets? That's the big concern. And it's not unique to us. We're all in this boat together, and that's where we're at. But that, that number right there should be the one that really jumps off the page to you. Okay, I guess before we get to the positives too, if you want to flip over that one sheet, that's just an example of one pathway that you have right there. That's an agribusiness pathway. A, a student can, can come into uh, Tippecanoe Valley and take those classes. Again, Mr. Jones does a great job. He's CTE certified, uh, and you can become a concentrator. So that gives you an idea of what it looks like. Now, don't be fooled. Because one thing the state loves to do is if you look at that and there's some blanks, you think, wow, there's some rooms for some electives on there. Well, if you notice across the top, if you start counting the spaces that the state did, that's for a school that has eight periods. I don't know any school that has eight periods, right? Not at the high school level, okay? So you gotta squish everything over one. And go, you know, now we're looking at a seven period deck. And so then it becomes really, really, really tough. Okay, and we'll talk about some of the negatives that, that go with that and some concerns that we have. Um, I just didn't want you to look at that and be like, well, there's plenty of blanks for electives. There really isn't. There really isn't for sure. Yes, sir? So look at this. You're telling me that every kid is going to have to take English 12 now? Or not now, but I mean by 23? Every, every student takes English 12 at, right now currently. Every, even the ones that, I mean. Everyone. I'm trying to think. So is it this, the same senior English that I took where you had to do research papers and all that? Mm -hmm. yes. Prep you for college? Mm -hmm. Every student staying there, even the general diploma, yes. core oh, yeah. 40s are doing that now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, again, I, I just, when you look at that, when you look at the pathway there too, some things I want to point out to you is there's some things that are missing, especially when you look at your freshman year. As, as you go into your junior and senior, there is, there is room to, to have a few electives. But notice, if, if you were to take away a class period, which is what we have at, at most schools and what we have at the high school, um, there's, there's no room in your schedule for, say, a study hall, uh, for a resource class period. Um, one thing that, that I'm, I'm really worried about, and I know other principals are, where do fine arts fit in? You know, where, where's band and choir or an art student go? Um, again, there, there's just, it's going to be um, very creative. That, that always comes into your sophomore year because you have to have PE to, to begin with. So you have to get your whole year of PE in, which some do. But I mean, again, you're not as a freshman. Very yeah. unlikely as a freshman. Well, they allow uh, so there's only one PE <coughs> class there. Whole year. The, the PE. Yeah, one and two, and then you can take advanced PE. There's PE one, PE two, and then advanced comes in. Well, they allow summer school for incoming eighth graders to that credit again yes that's going to be an option yes summer schools and summer schools an option especially uh for pe especially for our students that do want to be in band or choir um they're going to have to there's just there's just when you figure there's seven period a day as a freshman and you need math science english social studies which most of them do you take a year of pe which most of them do 
All right, you're gonna have to figure out what pathway they're gonna be in. There's six. All right, and then on top of that, your foundational classes, a lot of world languages. They're saying that world languages will count as your uh, two credit hours towards your CTE. So you're at seven. And we didn't mention any of those other things. So, so Mr. Craig, you're, you're saying that as freshmen, uh -huh. your students have to pick basically what career field that they're interested in at that age. I, I would even go even worse. I would say no later than freshmen. So as eighth graders, we're going to be really looking at what we can do to, to put these. So you're going to have your your academic honors diploma kits, all right? They're going to go that route, and then we're going to be looking at um, how do how do we put people in, and what do you like? And, and the scary part is this: there's very little room to change. You think about the numbers. You think about the number of students that like. I mean, you know, think about we all. You know, when you go to college, how many times you change your mind on a major in college? And we're, to, we're asking kids four or five years younger to try to make a career field. And you're saying there's, if they want to change, it's going to set the students back if it's even possible. Yes. But if they're wanting to do the academic honors, it's easy to say that as freshmen, correct? Oh, yes. Because I know my boys did. They don't necessarily, do they still have to do a career path as far as say I no. want to be an engineer or I'm just going for my academic honors? What I got to do to get if, there. if there's one positive about it is that once kids declare academic honors, they kind of play that game, and then as they get juniors, they don't decide. Well, maybe I don't want to do. No, you're in. <laughs> you know, there's no choice. So I mean, that that's one positive is that I think I think too we'll have more students um, take on that rigor um, because they they'll, they'll want to get there. So um, that's a big piece. So if if they take on the academic honors and they get into their sophomore junior year and they they're not going to make it, mm -hmm. at that point what? What happens to that student? Do they are they ahead enough to be able to go to a? Uh, are they, are I they, guess I, I don't would they be able to get a CTE? No. Uh, probably what you'd be looking at is that that ASVAB test would probably be their out. Be uh, you would also look at um, can they reach the benchmark on the SAT or the ACT, depending on which test that the state decides. Although those benchmarks are hard. Um, but will they be able to go back and get a CTE as a junior when they decide? Um, they'd have to get six credits. It would really depend on what they've done before, if any of those would count as foundational. It could be done, but for me, I'd be very leery telling a parent, okay, jump in this CTE program. They can got to get every single piece of this so they can graduate. That's just, that's a scary numbers game right there. I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd feel comfortable as a principal or a guidance counselor saying, well, you could, you know, there's a chance of this, but, you know, if you got sick or, I can just, you know, you couldn't miss, you know, if you decided all of a sudden I want to do agribusiness, you, you, you'd have to be able to pass all those classes and see that. So, so, so one thing I noticed here, and I think where you're getting at is, you guys are going to have to start, we're going to have to start getting middle school involved. I mean, we're going to have to start doing, looking at things, classes that middle, is there, you know, possibility of adding more classes, eighth graders that are getting more credits for, yeah. for high slow. school. I mean, there's the a problem, problem with that, though, is they're on that trimester. Not a problem. And actually, uh, you know, I really want to give, uh, you know, Scott Backus, Mr. Backus has done a great job. He's been really easy to work with. We've got a slide coming up in a minute that talks kind of about what our plan is. But uh, Mr. Backus and I, from actually the very beginning, have already kind of been looking ahead. Uh, one class that is um, in almost every pathway is called uh, Preparing for College and Careers. This right now is taught at the high school. Uh, Mr. Backus, every eighth grader will take that. Every third eighth grader. Now, it doesn't affect them. The, the first class that these rules apply to are the seventh graders. So we're kind of giving it a trial run. But Mr. Backus has been great to work with. Uh, you know, he, he just does a really good job, as we all know. Um, and so he, he's been right there with me on this. What we're looking to do, too, is so if we have every eighth grader at least take PCC, every single one of them. It takes away as an elective as an eighth grader, but then what we can do when, let's say an eighth grader chooses facts, we can turn eighth grade facts into nutrition and wellness, which is a foundational class for that pathway. Uh, we can turn the, pri the an eighth grader chose as elective project lead the way, we can turn that into, uh, possibly turn that into the intro project lead the way class. Again, that, that would open up more room at the high school. So the big thing is though, making sure eighth graders understand uh, this is for high school credit. This counts on your high school GPA. Um, you know, it, 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 there's, a, there's a definite... Are we doing that now? In terms of, we have that class now, though, right? We don't have any of the... We, we don't have any of those. Uh, we do have some, like, algebra. 
would be one at the eighth grade uh, biology, which uh, that's something we're actually going to move. There are a few classes. Yeah, that's what that is, though. I'm sorry? The, the computer class? The grade there is a Project Lead the Way class there, but it's not It's not one of these. It doesn't this one we yeah. discussed. That, that's a, it's a Project Lead the Way class? It's it not a... I'm not sure. It's not, it, 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 it's great. We, I mean, it's an awesome class, too, and the kids really enjoy it, but it, it doesn't count as one of these. So what we want to do, quite honestly, what it is is a name change and we're kind of just switching a couple standards and it'll, it'll work. Uh, so we're there. So, you know, and, and, uh, and there are positives here. I mean, you know, the biggest positive is, you know, iSteps gone at the high school. That's great. You know, that's a, you know that's, that stresses out teachers, the amount of time that we spend. Uh, I think learning improves because at some point you are teaching to the test. You're, you're, you're really focused on that. So there, there are some, there's some really um, uh, important positives. That would be the big one. I think the worst area of career center, obviously, uh, we get more rigor. Um, we are adding dual credit in AP classes. Uh, We've had, we have real excited, I, well, I don't want to steal too much thunder, but I know the next board meeting I'd love to come to you with some of the, uh, the changes that we've seen with teachers being able to, to become dual credit approved, which is great uh, for, our, for our students. Um, we are looking at uh, changing our English 11 to an AP class. Um, we have a very, we have a great teacher, uh, Mrs. Engel there, or Dr. Engel I should say. I think we can really change her class into an AP, which maybe if you remember that bottom bullet, Maybe we can get some more, as I said, the one above low, maybe we can get some more kids uh, to have three dual credit classes or a combination of three dual credit and AP. Uh, a lot of our ag stuff is, is AP, uh, or pardon me, is dual credit, some of our facts. So, but one of them has to be in a content area. So maybe we could put more kids into Dr. Ingalls class than maybe would normally not traditionally be AP students, but I think with her expertise, uh, she could help get some kids over the bar. Again, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of tracking and, and really planning and, and, and working on those kind of things. Um, I think we've been over most of the concerns. You know, we feel like there's a missing pathway for about a third. Uh, the mastery scheduling for especially small rural schools is tough. Keeping track. I think, too, a lot of principals are concerned about what happens when a, when a student wants to come to Valley and we don't offer the pathway. That's a big issue. Uh, or what happens if one of our students goes somewhere else and they don't have that pathway? Um, really, really tough. As you guys mentioned, once they select, that's a, you know, you know, they're pretty much locked in. Um, there's a lot of details. There's a lot of details from the state. Uh, for me, one big issue is accountability. Uh, right now, you know, we're in a school. We're very proud of that. That's great. We want to keep that. One of the biggest things that helped us become an A school is our growth score. The, the score the kids received on the English are the I step 10 versus their eighth grade. Well, if there is no I step, what happens to growth? You know, if it's just based on, let's say the state chooses the SAT, which I think that they will, um, you have the SAT score the end of your junior year, what are you using for growth? Uh, currently, we do not give the PSAT to ninth graders. Probably will start. These are questions that we need to find out. Um, we don't want to make that decision until we know that the SAT is what they're going to be using. They could use the ACT. Uh, a lot of politics involved in that decision, certainly money involved in that decision, uh, and things like that. But accountability will be a huge, you know, it's, it's hard enough as, as a high school when you know that the graduation rate is going to be attacked because they're going to a core 40. So um, lots of questions there. I've already mentioned about earning a diploma but not graduate. And, and honestly, special education students and alternative education students, where do they fit on this? How, what does that look like? Uh, those are huge, huge questions that are going to need to be addressed. Now remember, this is incoming seventh, or the seventh graders to be able to this is the first class. So we have, a, we have some time, but really it starts next year with that PC, with, with getting that. And, and again, I can't thank uh, Mr. Backus for being uh, easy to work with and, and being right in and being on board. So. Um, and then, you know, so here's our plan. Uh, we've already talked about moving PCC to the eighth grade. Uh, every student will have that for this year, and then uh, certainly that'll, that'll stay there. Um, we need to look at moving the other foundational courses to the eighth grade, nutrition and wellness, intro to ag, um, would, would maybe be a, a, a big component at the middle school. These are just things that, that we're looking at. Um, you know, focusing on pathways for students who are not working towards an academic honors diploma. We're going to have to really just like we talked about, really get them um, and, and, and kind of almost pigeonhole them. 
Uh, certainly, we need to provide more dual credit AP classes, but as I told you, we talked about school improvement. This, is some, this was a goal of mine anyways, and really one of our biggest needs, and we're really, I really feel confident about where we're at. Uh, let's see what else we have here. You know, continue the partnership with the Career Center. Uh, we're going to have to really focus on preparing students for the SAT, if that's the way they go, uh, and then certainly prepare students for the ASVAB test, uh, where 31 is the current cut score. Any questions? Do, do you expect many changes from the state since there's so many questions? I mean, in the next couple of years, I mean, there's so many questions out there. Do, don't you expect that this is not going to be a hard? I don't, I don't think, think there's going to be many changes, no. I think that they feel like, I'm, honestly, uh, you know, on the day that they were voting on this, Mr. Boggs and other superintendents, and, and, and I was streamlining it, watching, watching the video, and uh, the overwhelming, I would say, six, seven to one against this. And, and you know they didn't care you know you have all these the state superintendents and, and, and you know, the best educational minds and all these years of experience down there you know just imploring them please don't vote on this and uh, you know a seven to four vote and i believe there was only one of the non-educators person on the state board that did not that voted against it so all three educators on the board voted no and i think maybe they got one person to to, to switch and, and again it wasn't that the people think that all of this is a bad idea but it was a delay to, to hammer out some things I don't think you're going to see a lot of changes because I feel like they've kind of this is what we're doing and they, they put this band-aid out there and they're, they're going to want to see it there, there are questions um, that we're going to have to fill in um, starting with what will be the test that'll be a big one I think I don't I don't think you're gonna see changes I think you'll see some clarifications but the model you see in front of you, I believe, is, is, is what we're going to be working with for some time. One of the big questions right now is who's going to be responsible now for implementing this? Are they going to let the Department of Education implement this? I think if they do that, um, I think we'll, we'll see it be successful because Dr. McCormick will make sure that it works for our schools. If they choose for the state board to implement it, probably going to be more of the same because they don't, they don't understand how things need to be in our schools to meet the needs of our kids and, and it appears like they don't really care <laughs> sometimes how it affects our kids. You know, the, the, as Chad has said, the big question is we've got maybe 25-30% of our students that when they see this, are they just going to give up and think there's no way that we can do this. I've, I've heard that from several others. <coughs> there's a concern there that we may have a certain population of kids that just see this and say, there's no way that I can do that. Right. Now, we'll do everything we can to, to work against that, but that's that's an issue that's out there. The other thing is there has been no talk about how much this is going to cost. Nobody can put a dollar figure on this. Now, if I come to you guys with a program that I want to implement, and you ask me how much it costs, and I can't give you a number, <laughs> I'm probably not going to pass it, are you? No. And that was amazing to me that that they went ahead and approved this and don't have any idea what the cost is going to be. So let me ask you, Stephanie, what's this going to do to your workload as a guidance counselor? I, mean, I would assume it's just overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a big concern for counselors across the state. And one of our biggest concerns is just, um, like Mr. Kripe said, there's a lot of good emphasis on the CTE, but the lack of flexibility for students. Different decisions. So that going to require you to pretty much every student I mean, track and like almost weekly, I would almost guess, or maybe even <coughs> more so to make sure they don't get behind. Because it sounds like you get behind here, you're oh, yeah. you know. <coughs> it's it's um, yeah, and not only behind in your CTE or your pathway, but behind in any of your courses causes you just don't have room. Yeah, um, right. no it, 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 it's a the logistics of it and tracking of it is a, is a huge nightmare that uh, they've not even considered. So, it, it, and, and then, you know, as a principal or you know, a guidance counselor sitting in a room with parents and explaining that, you know, this is what we think is best, you know, you're really deciding. You're deciding for kids. Um, that we're going to have, you know, that's just, that's just the, the game that we're in. You know, I, again, I do want to stress, though, um, I want to thank Ms. Sanglin for all her work, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Connolly. It's been, we're, we're, we're ahead of this. We, I feel like, you know, we, 
we were where we need to be, and, and I really can't thank Mr. Backus enough for you know being so flexible and adding PC. We are adding PCC before this even came out, and that's a big piece. And now we'll look at uh, different things, and, and you know, I feel confident that we're going to get there, and, and we'll find a way. But it's it is a, it is certainly a game changer. Um, and I think something else that we need to say publicly is the fact that our area of businesses and manufacturing companies, um, so forth, are going to have to really step up because you know we do quite a few work-based learning experiences with students. That number is going to multiply significantly because you're going to have kids from Warsaw and Trite and Whitco, all the area schools. A lot of those kids are going to need those experiences. So our businesses, our industry. Those folks are going to have to all step up and really work with us to help us now. Of course, they're the ones that are clamoring for the workforce because they can't find enough people right now to fill their jobs. So this is probably the right time. The timing is good for that. But still, you know, we have folks that won't accept anybody that's unless they're 18 years old. You know, we're going to have to find ways around those things because there are going to be lots of needs for a lot of kids. I think too we have to give our teachers great credit. I don't know of any school our size that has HCTE certified teachers and the dual credit that we have that's out there and uh, we have teachers that are jumping on board. I, I hope the next board to come with you with some really a, a report on how many teachers we have that are going to become dual credit certified and are willing to, to do AP and, and, a, and a board administration that supports our teachers doing that. Uh, that that's, a, that's a big piece for us. Uh, you know, if I, if I was a principal of school that didn't have that, that, that this, this becomes even more of a big deal. So, so I asked Mr. Kreitman and Ms. Zane to come talk to you guys about this tonight because I know you're hearing about it, you're reading about it, you're seeing it on television. It is a big thing. It's going to be a, a huge challenge for all schools, but we're up to it. We'll get it done. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Let us know if you need anything. Same question. Give it to you, but let us know. <laughs> one question. Yeah. Could I ask if this will alter what summer school classes you may have to alter? Um, it's hard to tell. I, I think um, summer school certainly maybe will look at offering um, more things for freshmen. Um, because there's just not any room in their schedule. Um, uh, probably too early to really know how to answer that. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Eichmann. That's it. Mm -hmm. Business. On to our student representatives. We've got Dylan Wood and Cheyenne Oldfather. What do you have for us this evening? All right. Well, there's been a lot going on at the high school, especially since it's towards the end of the semester. Um, we recently had our inductions for the National Honor Society. Um, we This round was just for current seniors, and then in the spring we'll be having another round for um, juniors and seniors. Um, for finals, those are coming up. We'll be starting those Thursday, this Thursday, and then the last day of finals will be on the last day of the semester, which is Tuesday, um, which follows with a long, much needed break for everyone, I think. Um, we recently just finished I-STEP testing for sophomores and some juniors, um, which a lot of them said their remediation helped a lot, so that's really positive thing to look at. And then, uh, scores, Mr. Craig, we'll just be back. Um, you know, it's all again, it's the state. Uh, probably best case scenario into January, worst case scenario into February. Okay, sorry to interrupt. You there, Dylan. Oh, it's fine. Uh, last Saturday, uh, in swimming, Chase Brower he broke the record at 50 feet and he did it in 21 and 90 seconds at the uh, well, Wolf Sea Invitational. So he did really well, and then, uh, Student Council and the English class, uh, they went shopping uh, for the Miracle Tree and it was to help people in the community and we uh, wrapped the gifts for them. And when is Wednesday? Wednesday. 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 So how many, how many students do we have that or families that are being affected by that? Sure. I know there's 330 students children that's going to be taken care of i'm not sure uh, 60 families something like that but wow. yeah, 330 kids in our community are being taken care of by community support so it's awesome, it's awesome. Great. 
Thanks, guys. Good deal. Thank you, fellas. All right. If there's nothing else, I believe we're good to go. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.